Welcome back to the Wizard Shop, and yes, I have purchased the Car Trek 1978 Ferrari 308. Let's take a look at all the work it's going to take to get this thing sorted. Let's get started. You bought Freddy's 78 Ferrari. I bought something, Mrs. Wizard. I, I can tell it's this big red thing in our shop. Yes, and it, it wasn't cheap. I, I can imagine. Are those footprints I see on the hood? Yes, yeah, so they hired a professional model during Car Trek. You guys seen that when you've seen the series. She actually stood on the car. She did an excellent job. She did what she came to do, and I really don't appreciate them standing on the car, but it is what it is. It'll buff out, right? I hope that it will buff out. Okay, okay. If not, I will just have to have the one hood piece, trunk piece, frunk piece, repainted. So how much did you pay for this? $25,000. Whew, that, that is a good chunk of change. That's a lot of money. Yeah. But Freddie purchased this from Hoovy for thirty or $35,000. So, during Car Trek, you guys seen that I was on the show, I was the mechanic, I checked out all three different Ferraris and gave my opinion of them. And during the filming, Freddie made several comments during the beginning, I really don't want to take this home. I've already got so many projects to film, I've got the McLaren, I've got this, I've got that going on. I really don't want to take this home. I'd like to go home with an empty trailer. And that's when I called Mrs. Wizard. And so we're inheriting a derivative hoopty from Hoovy. Yes. Help us, guys. Help us. <laughs> yes. I called Mrs. Wizard, and yes, I did get the green light. I didn't just plunk down that kind of money without talking to her first. No, no, he did. And I, I gave him... I gave him the run through. I asked about all sorts of questions, making sure that, you know, it's going to be in good shape and... And after she said it would be fine, then I proposed my offer to Freddie Tavares, if you don't know who Freddie is. I said, Freddie, I can relieve you of your problem of having to tow this home. I can make this thing disappear and you will never have to even worry about this car anymore for $25,000. He thought about it for a minute and he goes, okay, car wizard, that sounds great. I was like, wow, I should have offered 20. You should have, yeah. you should have. But really, he didn't want the thing, and he took a little bit of a hit selling it, but really it saved him so much trouble. He had other projects, actually, he was picking up along the way home. He needed an empty trailer. And what was really fortunate for us is they ended filming in Colorado, and he's in Florida, and Kansas is just in the middle of it, and he just had to drop it off here at the shop for us. Yep, he delivered it right here to the shop. And you guys can see that on Tavares' channel, he actually shows the delivery of this vehicle to the shop. And if you watch a couple of videos back a ways, when Jared was in one of our videos, that's when the car got delivered. Unfortunately, yes. we couldn't show anything until after Car Trek aired. Yep. And as you've seen in Freddie's video, it showed up with no doors. Oh, yeah. But for filming reasons, they had to take the doors off. I'm not sure all the details behind it, but I got the doors back on, and there was so much work to do. Let's take a look around the Car Trek Ferrari. And then we'll take a look at the interior. That's where we're going to start first. So we'll start at this corner. It has the iconic flip-up headlights, and I really like those. There are, those are around to about the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, and those go away. I really like the pop-up headlights. This thing has had a repaint. That's why it looks so shiny for being 42 years old. It's a year older than me. The wheels that it has on it are the stock 14-inch Chromadora wheels. That's what came with this car. And a lot of people think I should go to 16s or go to bigger wheels, but I really like the look of these. It has meaty tires, it'll ride more comfortably, and the car was designed with 14-inch wheels in mind. One thing I'm definitely going to have to fix is the floppy mirror. There's probably just some loose bolts inside of there, but it may need a little Viagra, Mrs. Wizard. It's not really standing up there, is it? No. One really neat thing about these is where you fill it up with gas. There's a little door that opens, and there's the Ferrari gas cap that weighs 20 pounds. It's very heavy 
steel or loop. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably steel. It has a magnet and just closes. Move around to the back quarter. That looks really, really nice. And I'm glad that these are in good shape because they're seven or eight hundred dollars per light. Very expensive. You can see the Ferrari symbol and also the 308 GTB symbols need some repaint and I will leave that to Mrs. Wizard. She's good at hand painting things. Thanks. Mm -hmm. It has a Euro style rear bumper. It doesn't have the big US bumper that would normally stick out about this far. That was done long before it had anything to do with Car Trek. As you can see it has the Car Trek sticker. And it's missing the Ferrari emblem where they put Auto Tempest over it. I will have to buy a Ferrari emblem that goes there. But being that this has this center painted piece indicates that it is a carbureted model. And we'll get into the engine in a next video or two as we move on down the line of sorting this car out. But you can tell that it's a carbureted model based on this center, I guess you could call it a hat almost, it sits over the air cleaner. And that keeps rain and things from going right down on it. And as we get down this side, this really doesn't do anything. It's solid piece on this side. No dents, no scratches. It's not rusted, amazingly. If you watch Car Track, you will see that some of the frame pieces have surface rust, but there's no major damage or rust or anything. Just some oil leaks and things with the engine. I really like these side scoops. That is iconic Ferrari. All the glass is in good shape. No chips, no scratches, no cracks on any piece of glass anywhere. As you can see on the grill, it doesn't look like anything I've seen as far as GTS, GTB, QV, GTSI, any of those. It doesn't have this grill. This is some sort of aftermarket grill. I, I think they were going for the 288 GTO look. It doesn't even have a bumper here. There's some lights behind it. I will probably leave that as is. I think it looks really good. One thing you will notice, it was cracked. When the vehicle was being transported to Freddy, that happened and he was not very happy. That'll have to come off and have the fiberglass repaired and have that repainted. But that shouldn't be too expensive. I don't have to paint the whole car. I just have to fix that small area and have that repainted. But it's very, very unusual front grille. I've not seen any other 308s with this style. I don't even know where that came from or how they made that. Wow, that thing is absolutely clean. How did Whovie find a car this clean? Well, there was actually an estate sale for someone who passed away here in the Wichita area. So this car actually came from Wichita originally in this area. He purchased the car for Car Trek. He was thinking about purchasing it for himself, but he was like, Car Wizard is not going to want to go through all this. And very likely it would have been so expensive that it would be something that's best done for a do-it-yourself individual. Hoovy really didn't want to go through the entire car like I'm going to have to go through it. So it ended up on car track. Unfortunately, the, the prior owner passed away. There was an estate sale. He had 30 cars. And the story is, the family didn't even know that he had the 30 cars. They were in a building, and they'd just been sitting there all this time. And it wasn't until after the person passed away, the family found out, oh, whoa, what's going on here? Well, now we've got to sell all this stuff. The car had been sitting for probably several years, three, four, five years, maybe more. The carburetors were so gunked up that it barely would run. They got it running good enough for car track. But in, a, in the next video we do on this, you'll see what I have to do to sort it and get it to run perfectly. But today, we're going to look at the interior. Let's take a look. So let's take a look at the interior. Although it's a little rough, it is all very salvageable. Some of the things are going to be coming out and going back stock. Some things just need to be cleaned up and there's a lot of wiring I'm going to have to repair. For those of you who have seen Car Trek already, will have seen the interior and know all what's going on in here. But Let's take a look. The seats are, they're not torn or ripped, but they're in very sad shape. These are not original Ferrari seats. These are custom rose seats. That's something from the 70s or 80s. I've never heard of rose seats, and they're not very comfortable either. I will not be using 
these rose seats. They will be coming out. We'll take them out here in a little bit. Does this thing really just have 21,502 miles on it? Yes, those are actual miles as shown on the title. I have the title now. Those are actual miles, only 21,000 miles on it. Pretty nice, huh? Wow. It's set for a long time. Obviously. Most Ferraris of this year had a black dash. This one's uh, kind of a brown. What would you call that, Mrs. Wizard? Taupe? Chocolate? Chocolate. Burnt umber? Chocolate pudding? I like chocolate pudding. Yeah. Well, this thing was heavily customized in its first years of its life. Whoever bought this car knew completely splurged. I mean, opened his wallet and said, go for it. You can see it had a police scanner, police radio. Here's the bezel that went there, and you can see it had a ZT driving computer in it. That stuff will be going away. I don't think any of it works. I've tried to power it all up, and some of the things just don't work. This was right here on a bezel. It's like a ETA or elapsed time counter. There's normally supposed to be just a black piece of dash lower panel right here and a little radio, and that's it. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to pull this piece out and we're going to show you guys the mess that's behind it. Here we go. Well, I must say it's not as bad as that Rolls Royce you had, but that's a little scary. Yeah, it is a little scary. I don't have to rewire everything. What I have to do is just remove the unnecessary things. As you can see, all these little holes, there were switches and switches and switches. Uh, Freddie and Hoovy both thought that this might have been a cannonball car. It was set up from New York to LA, trying to do elapsed time, and everything was set up for that. I've removed these switches, and we'll be removing the wiring. I'll be reverting this back to stock. I'm also going to upgrade the fuse box to a Birdman glass fuse box and not these weird little ones. These have issues and known for having the plastic melting and corrosion and things like that. So we'll be taking care of that, that's for sure. There's a flasher relay. There's a bunch of relays to do fuel pump, headlamp, all kinds of different relays and things there. This is the fuses. Here's like a buzzer when you open the door, it's supposed to make a buzzing noise. It does if you put the fuse there. But I have purchased already the piece that goes here and also the piece that fits here that will take a single din radio like it's supposed to and then the vents are right there on the bottom. I'll probably have those two pieces reupholstered to match this color. The dash is in good shape. There's no reason to throw it away. I'm just going to go with it. Right here is some wiring that I've started to remove and it went all the way to the headliner. And the reason why it did that is because there was a huge center console radio. And let me show you this guy. Let me show you this here. This is a Panasonic component stereo. It had equalizers right here. This is the equalizer. It had volume, a tape player. None of this stuff worked. I put power to it and some things light up, some things wouldn't. It actually started to smell like an electrical smell. And I was like, nope, we're not burning down this Ferrari. Out this stuff comes, it's coming out. So as you can see, it's also brown here. I believe the entire interior, and I mean all of it, was customized when this car was new. So like I said, I'm not gonna redo the whole dash. It's in good shape. I'm just gonna have to go with the color. And that was installed right here. You can see the indentation of it where it was on the center console. Another reason why I'm getting rid of that as well is that I'm kind of a tall person and every time I would move my head, I would hit my head on it. I really didn't think I needed that. I really don't need all that stuff, especially with the electrical problems it was having. So it looks like we need a new headliner. Yeah, I'll be pulling the headliner down and I'll have them match this color fabric or material and just redo the headliner. In the footwell by Mrs. Wizard's foot, was this big amplifier. This is what powered the overhead unit we just talked about. And that was right next to the gas pedal, and it was kind of in the way. And that's also when I looked down there and I was like, nope, that's coming out. There's some wiring that needs to be tidied up, but it doesn't need to be fully rewired. So luckily, I don't have to do that. 
that center console was covering up this little tunnel here. I think that's supposed to be like a piece of trim that went there. Maybe I might have to find that. But it looks fine as it is with carpet as well. So I'll have the center console reupholstered and make it look a lot nicer. There's some AC switches there will be deleted. I won't be using. It did have AC when it was new, but most of the components are missing. And for what I've read on a lot of forums, that even when it's working, it's marginal at best. And the amount of money that it would take to get it running again, I could put it somewhere else. If it's 115 degrees outside, I don't think I'm going to drive this car anyway. So AC will be deleted off this car. It'll make timing belt surfaces a lot easier too. A lot of the switch gear will be repaired or replaced and it'll be made to look like it was when it was new before all of this weird stuff. Like I mentioned a minute ago, the seats are coming out. Let's go ahead and get them out right away. Let's see what it looks like with no seats. I've already unbolted these, so I'm going to go ahead and yank them out. I'm going to purchase some aftermarket seats that will bolt into these original threaded holes in the floor that will match the color of the interior, that look tasteful, that match the interior, but they're not carbon fiber and bright red and weird colors. I'm not doing that. But these seats, like I said, if somebody wants to use these seats, they're not ripped, they're not torn, I would also sell these. I know nothing about the Rose Company. They need to be refinished or repainted. They are leather. They're just very, very worn. So let's yeah, go It kind of looks like maybe the guys that are doing those cannonball runs were uh, spilling all over their seats. Yeah, spilling drink, energy drinks. Well, I guess they didn't have energy drinks back then, but maybe coffee or who knows what. Let's go ahead and get that seat out. Right. The last thing I'll talk about, the power windows do not work. Freddie said when he put the fuse in and tried to operate them and blow the fuse. That's very common, the motors go bad, or either that, the cabling inside is seized up and it needs to be cleaned up. So I'll definitely have to get that fixed. So on the door panels here, I'm probably not going to replace them. I'm going to have the leather refinished. It matches the interior. It makes it look part of the whole package. These speakers here, I will replace those with modern speakers that are a lot thinner, that don't stick out so far. But I'm not going to throw this away because it matches, like I said, it matches the interior. I'll have the leather refinished to where it looks nicer. It's a little bit worn, but it's not torn or ripped or tore up or anything, so I definitely can reuse that. I'm not going to just throw it away. The carpet matches the interior. The colors are all matching the rest of the colors. So I think I'll just stick with that. So I'm very excited to get this thing sorted out. Hopefully this summer I'll get to drive it around. It's going to be so fun. It's going to sound so good. You guys have watched the show on TV, Magnum. This is totally that era, and I love the styling of this car. I've looked at them in the past, and I just drooled over them. And when the opportunity arose to actually own one, albeit it needs a lot of work, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Because even with the money I spent on it, and I put more money into it to fix it, I still will come in under the value of a carbureted 78 GTB 308. If you check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below, there's a list of a lot of the tools we use in the shop, and they're tools that I find that I would not work without in a shop. They save a lot of time, they save a lot of headaches, a lot of screaming, hair pulling, If you, unless you don't have hair like, like me. But make sure you check that out. We get a small cut if you purchase any tools. We appreciate that. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, you really should do that now because there's going to be really cool content on this car. Thanks for watching.